Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA. Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Dope Interviews brought to you by the Mighty 19 Media Group. I'm your host, Warren Shaw, and I ain't got no time to waste, man. We got to skate in the virtual building today. I got my guy, Makai Curtis. He's the star of Power Book 3, Raising Kanan, where he plays the role of Kanan Stark, as you well know. Makai, welcome to Dope Interviews, my G. Welcome. To- nice to meet you, man. Likewise, Warren. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. This is this is going to be a fun, fun, fun time. So, on Dope Interviews, we always got to kind of start from the beginning, but we don't need to be too revisionist, right? Because you've been in this role for a little bit here now. But I do want to ask you, what drew you to the character initially? And I guess, how has has any of those characteristics changed for you as you've kind of developed the character over the last three seasons? Um, The first thing that stood out was, like you just said, uh, getting to develop the character. Um, one of the very early conversations I'd had with Sasha Ping and Courtney Kemp uh, Courtney, who created the overall power versus Sasha, who showruns uh, Raising Canaan, was that, you know, this character is going to go through some changes. It's going to go, it's going to change, it's going to go through things. So we need somebody that's able to do that, hit these benchmarks, but also fill in the blanks and kind of sprinkle whatever there. So that for me as an artist was a challenge that I was looking forward to um, and something that I continue to have fun with to this day with any sort of character that you get to play is, is just figuring out, uh, you know, how to make it stick um, how to make the changes in the experiences that this person is going through like real, because that's basically what it is. You're simply a reflection of somebody going through something somewhere. I mean, I think that's extremely well put. And I guess, you know, from the actor side of it, right. Cause you, you're an artist, right. You know, you develop <laughs> your craft, <clears throat> excuse me. How much of it do you think, did you watch, if you will, preparing for to be Kanan, if you will, 50 in the role as Kanan or 50 himself as an individual, or were they synonymous? Are they the same mannerisms, characteristics, if you will? Um, I think there's a, I think there's like a 50, 50 split of that. Right. <laughs> <It's <indeed>. <laughs> but <laughs> I think there's, there's part of it where it was like, you're watching, uh, what he did as the character because again it's a character so there's a different thought process involved of course um, there may be things that are influenced by you know what 50s is gone through or done or, or things that he's seen and been around but yeah for a lot of it, it it's just keeping the essence of like what this person did as this character um the added layer of that is that because 50 has such a just unique you know, just light about gravitas, yeah. exactly, literally. So gravitas. So then you have, then you get to add the layer of like, all right, so how do I add that extra, extra little bit of like that dazzle of what he brought to it? So it's like, all right, now let's watch some interviews of him, and hmm. try to some of his, his flavor, his cadence and his, uh, you know, inflection to what's going on, because that's also part of what made that character so big and scary and there. So, and well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but um, one of the things I did want to ask for sure is, are at this point, are you able to kind of collaborate on the character development? Do you get to improv a little bit on set as you're playing the role of Kanan Stark? Absolutely, man. I think it's been a collaborative effort from day one. Um, there's always the uh, pointedness of keeping true to what's there on the page because it's already written so thoroughly and so there but i think we've built enough of of a rapport excuse me with uh everybody that's on set cast and crew um to you know experiment and and step out and do things because that's really all acting is anyways take after take is just trying stuff seeing what works seeing what fits how this feels um so yeah you know like there's there's a bit of improv in in any scene, no matter how much you're going off script or on script, you have to be there in that moment, reacting to what's happening, or you're kind of going to miss the mark and it's not going to hit as well. Something a little bit kind of off the record here, but I wanted to kind of ask. So I spoke to Sasha last year, and he one of the things that was interesting to me when he just made like a kind of quick uh, joke, if you will, about being in in a in a period piece. And he was like, yeah, you know, Haley didn't know what a, what a Walkman was, you know, I think going into it initially. So I thought that was like so interesting and didn't even think to take that because, again, you are you're, you're young, you're young adults. Right. But this isn't necessarily your time, your generation. But 
you've been in, you've been embedded in this now. What is something about playing a character that was basically grown up in the '90s? Like, what have you learned about hip hop culture, that culture, New York in general? You're, I think you're from Jersey, right, or whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, is there something from that era that you wish that you learned or wish was maybe even still relevant today? Ah, man, honestly, '90s culture is still relevant today. I think. Oh, there you go. That's my guy. I knew this was going to be a true. Game. I mean, it's the truth. Nineties culture is still relevant today. Any a, a lot of what was done then, you still see in fashion, in music, through samples and through you know just groups and stuff that are still around, through artists that are still around. You see it through, um, it, you see it through the show. Even like the fact that in twenty twenty four, there's still a show. Um, about you know an era that was so influential and it's it's bridging a gap, right? It's like we're we're telling the story of the people that were around them, but we're also telling the story and painting the picture for people that weren't there and and getting to you know bring them together and start that new conversation, start that new dialogue. So um that's a thing for me as a person that like an older soul, I've always been and love 90 stuff so like i kind of knew a lot of it um but i think getting so enveloped in it you kind of just develop a deeper appreciation for it. you develop more of like just a a prestige hold for it um so that's kind of been been it for me really it's like you know what i mean it's just i've always wanted to be a 90s baby so like right. getting to live it vicariously through a character is just like it's fun the car oh. clothes the music, getting to walk around with the Walkman every night. I'm like, damn, like, <laughs> iPads and phones now, or iPods and phones. Now. It's like, it's it's fun to get to jump into that world. Makai, I think that's 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 amazing. Here we're talking with Makai Curtis, Makai Curtis, star of uh, Power Book Three, Raising Canaan. Makai, um, so are there any specific scenes from this from this season that you found to be difficult or challenging you know especially you know as, as a person who's crafting your, your your artistry if you will this is a very intense season probably more than any other what about this season it was there a, a film or a scene that you were like damn this was this was a tough one ah uh, man i think the whole season honestly you know like i feel like um it was just a stretching thing not in a bad way i absolutely you know, I, yeah. I love the the challenges and the and the the workout i got from it um you know every day was a it was just a new thing. It was just a new way to try to push myself and challenge myself. And honestly, even watching the season, I'm watching back like, damn, like we did this. I did this. <laughs> um, because you're so locked in in that moment. You know, you're just kind of going, you're doing the thing. So you're not really necessarily like you're aware of what's happening. But then also on the other side of that, you're so locked in, you're getting that done. Now you got to get ready for the next one. So you kind of forget everything that just happened. Yeah. Just start looking here. I actually just kind of talked about that on my Instagram couple weeks ago was like um just the, the entire filming process of like you know getting the scene and and breaking it down and figuring out where you want to hit and um then translating that on screen and taking it through the paces and how that emotionally kind of goes through you and um you know just moving from there with it but um yeah you know it's 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 all a, a challenge um for any artist that is you know trying to push themselves and, and do something new yeah, and and I think again the the writing definitely is gonna is pushing all the actors and all the characters rather. And I want to talk a little bit about character development, but one of the main themes this season is just the fraying of your characters from the family and all semblance of family, true, related, and even adjacent, like in the character of famous as well too. You know, is there any ability for for Kanan to kind of come back from this right now? I know we can't go into spoilers and so forth and so forth, but is there an ability to for that family unit to kind of come back together in any capacity? I mean, family is family. You can't, you know, ever choose them per se, right? Exactly. I think right now, Kanan is going through a time where he just, he's trying to establish the world for himself because trusting the other people around him to do it has kind of led him to this tizzying tailspin of like, what the hell is what and who's what and who's who and how did this happen? And you were telling me this thing, but it's literally not that. So he just doesn't trust anything anybody around him is saying. It's not that he doesn't, uh, you know, like love or, or care for them, but it's that he just doesn't appreciate how they've gone about showing that they love or care for him. Because it's like, to him, it's like, that's not how I would do it. That's not love. That's not love, right? 
So even, you know, you see him kind of, you see the, the bits of that when, uh, even when Jukebox comes up to, to, to the, to Famous's crib and, and uh, Ronnie's like, yo, I could talk to her. He like, yo, you're not, you're not doing shit there. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't need you worried about anything other than the business stuff right. that we're talking about. Um, so you, you see, you know, throughout the season, you see him still try to, Kane, I'm talking about, you see him still try to balance and wrestle with like, this is me, but this is my family, and this is all I know, and this is all I really love, but this is what I need to do. It's like, it's, it's a, you know, it's a song and a dance. No, real talk. And it's interesting you brought up Ronnie there because I actually want to get to that point next. So correct me if I'm wrong, Makai. Like, I, I think I, I might be deep diving here, but I feel <laughs> like I see why Ronnie was brought into this season, not only from the aspect of, you know, moving from, you know, weed to heroin, her heroin rather, but also kind of, there's a little bit of uh, older Kanan and Ronnie, especially with how he just kind of pops up and, you know, has that intimidating factor. And then you, you see throughout the season, Kanan kind of goes from really even being intimidated by Ronnie to even embodying some of Ronnie's personality. Would you say that's a, a correct assessment, if you will? Absolutely. That is the story of raising Kanan, man. You know, he it is the story of watching this young dude uh, take on all the, the pieces and the things that are around him. And and build his own sort of you know soup on on how to play the game. Um, so you're seeing him absorb just all of the the things and the the ways that people around him move, so he can step into that spot because that's ultimately what you've been watching him do since day one. It's like you know, mom, uncles, I see you doing this. I want to do this. I don't want to go to school if this is what you guys are doing. This is all I know. This is this is my example of what life is. So this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to be the best at. And I think within that character development, I'm going to harken back to some of the other characters. One of my favorite characters on the show uh, is is Marvin, at least in terms of how uh, his, uh, his that's character arc. Favorite character right now, man. That's everybody's favorite character. Well, it's, I think it's a character arc, right? He like you're seeing him really trying to progress, you know, become a better father. Yeah, he's still still dealing drugs and he's doing hits. Like, you know what I mean, let's keep it a buck. But yeah. again, they like you want to see that redemption, especially from the familial standpoint too. So, is there? I mean, I don't know if you just gave it away, but is there a non canon favorite character for you? It's it's probably Marvin. Like I I think everybody's favorite character, simply like you said, is for his arc right now. It's seeing you know, this person start one way and, and want to change, like actively you're watching him want to do better. You're seeing how the things he's done before affect him and how he's putting one foot in front of the other to kind of make that a, a different space. And that really, you, you, you want to root for that in anybody. You know what I mean? And, and I think, and there's also the, the relatability, can't talk to him. There's also, also the relatability in, you know, him just being kind of that goofy, light spirit in a lot of what's going on a lot of the times um, and, and always just trying to balance out what's going on. So I, I think everybody kind of knows or has an Uncle Marvin around him somewhere. Oh, boy. I think that famous words right there, but <laughs> famous words. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, last couple ones here, Makai. So, like, obviously the character of Jukebox played by Haley, she has a truly natural talented singing voice and that gets to be displayed throughout the course of the series and show so i gotta ask you do you have a hidden talent that you'd like to be displayed here you know on raising canaan a hidden talent i mean i don't know if my talents are hidden or if i just like don't talk about them as much how um, i mean let, let, let's lay it out here let's go i mean well not because like, i'm a musician too i play wow. drums I play keys i produce um but i don't know if those were things if those are things that would make sense for it though I mean, like, that's an entirely different world. That's an entirely different thing. It'd be cool to, you know, probably display those and some, something else that I get into. Um, I'm athletic as hell. You know, I play ball, so I can Boy. do the things. Uh, uh, you know, I, there's nothing that I can't do. Like, I don't, I don't say that, like, cockily or anything like that. I just, I'm a person that's always open and willing and, and ready to learn. And... I just gravitate and pick up on things quick. So, you know, anything I kind of put my mind to, like, I think one of my latest things has probably been like golf. Word. And bowling and like, act like, but not just like going to bowl. It's like actually figuring out like how to get down, angles. Yep. figure out the angles and golfing is like actually getting the swing right. And it's like, 
I don't know. You know what I mean? Like anything I, I again, anything I put my mind to, I think I try to like actually excel at. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and that's where you should be. I think, you know, just as, as a human, you know, as we're, we're transversing, you know, this, this life. And I love to see, even if it's just kind of a, a one-off, like maybe you and, and Juke get in the, get in the room on that. You get on the drums with a KCB and she's right. like, Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, man. You just kind of walk out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ooh, Hop on the NPC, drop a track real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It's all live. It's all live. Um, that is all the time we have for today. Makai, I want to thank you so much for, for joining me here and, and, and telling us your truth and the way that you continue to embody this character. I cannot wait for the seasons to come. I have obviously not seen the final episode, so I'm a little bit on my pins and needles here, man, but hopefully we'll get the wrap again. Um, that's all the time we have here again for Dope Interviews. He is Makai Curtis. Make sure you follow him on IG at the Makai Curtis. Make sure you follow Raising Canon on Stars. Make sure you catch all the episodes available now. Again, I'm Warren Shaw. You can follow me at Dope underscore Interviews. Um, and they know what it is, man. It's been another dope interview. And we're out. Peace, Makai. Thank you so much. Peace. Together we stand. Divided we never. The vision is one. Striving for the better. Working as a team. Working toward a dream. It's not even work when the team is the dream. On a united front, we got our own back. A band of brothers to counteract any attack. One heart in fact. Forget what the blood say. Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA. So let's do it for the love. Give to the max. Listen to opinion, but react to facts. And remember that together with a shh. But separate. Just pieces of it. Shoot, no. Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA. Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA. Family represent like a tree with names on it. We're free, no chains on it. Relieve the pain's gone. I can see. We come together like questions on the quiz. Mojo flow and viz, man, you know what it is. And if ignorance is bliss, you're gonna hate this lesson. Organized intellect like a tropical depression. My symbol is the cross, a mic and ghost peppers. Cause I'm just a black sheep growing up to be a shepherd. Moonlighting as a weapon to protect the children. Every brother is a father. Dynasties we're building. Max, J and K, Bay Bay and Isaiah, next level of the family foundation. Understand? Damn